I'm Heather Angel. Welcome to your course on creative macro photography, one of the most fascinating areas in photography. This course will take you on a journey into the captivating realm of the world of macro, revealing images that are so often overlooked with the naked eye. It will show you how to capture beauty, texture, as well as intricate designs in digital images. Each step of the way will be carefully explained how to choose the right equipment, how to use ambient light, including window light, and how to modify it. How to conceptualize and frame the perfect shot, whether using natural light, flash, or using artificial lighting, such as LED lights or flash. We, look, we will explore many natural objects outdoors, as well as learn how to work with tabletop objects indoors for display on the web, whether as an image on your own website or a product for selling on eBay. Here, the choice of the appropriate lighting and backdrop and the creative use of your camera are key to the perfect image. I've worked as a wildlife photographer for several decades. Devising the best way to take and light macro subjects has always been a great passion of mine. Welcome to lesson one, a seeing eye which will look at some inspirational shots and explain how to find and light subjects. It will also cover what equipment is needed for taking macro images. A seeing eye is essential to spot minutiae from the plethora of images around you to achieve a memorable macro shot. A bright red flower or fruit will leap out from green leaves, but sometimes subtle shots can be more rewarding. After color, it may be texture, or in this case, the light that catches the eye. The backlit kidney ferns found in New Zealand were spot metered using the darker green area in the upper frond. Here, texture stopped me in my tracks on the strand line. The arms of a brittle star, related to starfish, were writhing over the sand like miniature snakes to create an ephemeral textured abstract. Mounting the camera overhead so the sensor was parallel with the beach, the shot was taken using available light and a shutter speed of 1 to 50th of a second. The next eight images were also taken as seen to show you don't always have to modify the light to capture a striking image. Here it was a backlit ornamental charred leaf with striking red veins set within a glowing green leaf which caught my eye in a sparred a tight crop. Compared to many mites, these red velvet mites are giants at up to 10 millimeters across. They appear in Botswana after rain, but you cannot spot them by sitting in a jeep and you'll need to get out in a safe area and walk. You need a versatile tripod that rapidly adjusts from normal eye level to a worm's eye view so you can get crisp images when working close to the ground in low light without flash. By mounting the camera on a tripod, looking straight down onto the ground, only fine focus adjustments on the mites were necessary each time the tripod was moved. Raindrops on plants or petals rarely fail to make a pleasing macro shot, but calm conditions are essential because wind soon blows away the water. Here, an iris petal festooned with drops fills the frame without any tonal distractions creeping in at the corners. Using a hand spray to create artificial water droplets never precisely replicates natural rain. In sub-zero temperatures, when the air is humid, magical hoarfrost transforms fruits and leaves. If a harsh frost is forecast, it can be worth placing cones or other three-dimensional objects outside. A quick trip to a garden centre with some ornamental cabbages was how I came to take these pink leaves etched with frost. You have to be up early to get the best frost shots, but for a short period there can be shots that are even more magical after the sun emerges. As the warmth began to melt the ice, large water droplets appeared to decorate the tiny winter box flowers. For a brief time, the ice melt drops sparkled with the backlit sunlight before they fell to the ground. 